There's polynomial division. Now, if you, if you missed that part, or you were here, but you're like, my brain is still fuzzy on that anyway, we're going to go back over that in the first example. So we're going to nice and gently reintroduce you into this. Um, but for all of these four, right, what we want to say is, okay, you know, polynomial division, it's a cool thing, but usually it's a stepping stone. Usually it's you do this in order to do something else. And one of these something else's is graphing, something we're very familiar with, okay? So I've provided you a bunch of cubic functions. There's no reason why we can't increase the degree. We could do degree four or five or six or a million if we wanted, but it's kind of like, it doesn't get more interesting. It's still the same level of complexity if you like, it's just longer, okay? So we're gonna have a go at each of these. For each time, we're gonna divide by a given factor, the one I've provided over there in red, and then we're gonna use that to then put these things into a form we can actually graph, because at the moment, I have no idea what y equals x cubed minus 7x minus 6 actually looks like, okay? Morning. So let's begin by actually writing out our first, this is for question one, right? Our first long division. Now, there's a couple of curveballs here, right? The first one is, um, I've provided you, I think it was x plus 1, I've provided you with something to divide by. And you might say, well, but how do I know what I'm supposed to divide by? Soon we're actually going to learn some techniques so that you don't need to be provided that. You can actually work that out yourself. But for now, we're just kind of holding your hand a little bit. Okay? The second thing is, if you have a quick look at this polynomial, x cubed minus 7x minus 6, there's something a little bit sneaky in it, right? You don't have to write this part down, but when we do numerical long division, right? If I divided a number like this, you can see it's very important that when you write 2041, there's a single unit, there's four tens, and then there's two thousands. How many hundreds are there? There are no hundreds, but it's actually very important that you show that there are not any hundreds. That will actually factor into our division, right? And it's kind of the same deal over here. You can see how many x cubes there are. You can see how many x's there are. You can see how many constant terms there are. How many x squareds are there? zero of them, so that's obviously going to factor in. So let's include that when we write out our division. So I'm going to write x cubed first, then I've got that many x squareds, like you told me, and then I've got minus 7x minus 6 trailing. Okay, so at this point, let's see how your recall is. We're about to start this algorithm, right? We've set it all up. What's the very first thing that I do? Can anyone give me a suggestion? Yeah, go ahead, Sean. x squared. Okay, so I'm going to write down x squared in a second, but before I do that, where did x squared come from, and where am I going to write it? Yeah, go ahead, Javon. I divided x cubed by x. I'm like, just like in normal numerical division, I'm thinking, how many times does this thing go into whatever I'm dividing by, right? So I think about how many times does x go into x cubed. So can someone tell me why I'm ignoring the 1 at the moment? Why am I asking about the plus 1s? Yeah, Gary, what are you thinking? You need to get rid of the... Right, so this is all about, in polynomial division, right, I've got to deal with these x's first. They're the most important thing. If you want to think about it this way, at the moment, and this is not a trick question, but it's got a weird answer. What is x equal to at this exact instant in time? What's it equal to? X doesn't have any value, right? X could be anything, right? It's a variable, that's why we put a letter there instead of a number. Being that it could be anything, x could be like a million. If it were a million, then you don't care what one is next to it. This is the thing which really takes over, okay? Just like if I were dividing not by seven, but by 57, it's the 50 which is the thing you have to really watch out for, and then you include the seven with it. So just coming back to what Ashan suggested at the beginning, I'm dividing x cubed by x, which should be x squared. What am I going to do with that? Stanley, can you tell me where to go next? What will I do with that x squared? My conclusion for you is, pay more attention. It helps when you're on time as well. Okay, can someone rescue Stanley? Because he's going to have to answer another question later. Um, someone hasn't said anything yet, sorry? I'm going to multiply this x squared by what I was dividing by. By the way, what's this thing called? This thing that you're dividing by? Does anyone know its name? It's the divisor, right? The guy over here, the divisor. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and multiply through, and that looks to me like I get x cubed plus x squared. Happy times. And you know you have done it properly if all of your um, x terms, they match up, right? So I've got that. What am I going to do with this thing? Yeah, I'm going to do a subtraction at this step. I'm sort of still in the middle of my algorithm. So x cubed take away x cubed. Cancels out. That was the whole point of it. Be careful here because you've got negatives laying around, right? 0x squared take away x squared will give you how many x squareds? 
minus one of them. Yep, you content with that? This is one of the differences between numerical long division and polynomial long division. You're going to have negatives flying everywhere when you do this, okay? Which you never got when you're dividing regular numbers. Okay, um, I'm then going to do the next step. What's the next step? Okay, I bring down the 7x and now I'm ready to go again, just like I was at the start. I've kind of completed one cycle, okay? So I'm going to ask just like I did before, how many times does x go into that guy? Minus. minus x times, right? Which is weird to say, but you know that you've got this right if when you multiply back round, you're going to get something which cancels down here, yeah? So I'm going to multiply x plus 1 by minus x. So do you want to turn it to right? Um, We're multiplying f at the front? Squared, x squared. Uh, hold on a second, yep, yep. So I'm going to get an x squared, but what's going to be at the front? Minus. It's going to be minus, thank you very much. That's the whole point there. And then minus, uh, minus, minus x. x, yeah. So many coefficients and, and pronomials flying around, it is hard to keep it straight. But at this point, I now know what this looks like. I'm going to do my subtraction now, right? Did I, did I mention before there's going to be a lot of negatives, right? You're, you've got two negatives and you're yeah, subtracting them, okay? What doesn't cancel out? So what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. That's so confusing. I'm going to write it down and maybe I encourage you to do so as well if you're like, wait, well, that's weird, right? What you're doing in this line is minus x squared and you're subtracting minus x squared. When you subtract something from itself, maybe if I do it that, it's a little more obvious, right? You get zero, don't you? Which is sort of what we want. It's always supposed to go to zero. So this guy is going to cancel out. What about this? Be careful. It's minus 7x. Minus Minus, minus x. So how many x's are we going to have? Minus 6x, minus six x, right? So when you do that double negative, you're, really you're adding x, so you've got one more than there, I'm fine. I'm going to carry down this minus 6, and I'm at my last step. What do I do? Stanley, do you want to redeem yourself now? Okay, I'm going to write minus 6. Where am I doing that? Where am I putting minus 6? On the top, by the way, on the top, what is that thing on the top that we are building? Does anyone know its name? It starts with a Q. Quotient. It's the quotient, thank you very much. So there's my quotient, and I'm pretty much on the home stretch. What am I going to do with that minus 6? This is our last step through the algorithm. Okay, good. I'm going to multiply back by the divisor. By the way, this is why I was pointing out the names of these things, right? Isn't it so much more efficient to say multiply by the divisor rather than multiply by that thing at the front. You know the one that I'm talking about. It's like what? Well, don't be ambiguous. Give it a name so you can talk about it. Okay. I'm going to multiply out the front. When you multiply by negative 6, what do you get? Multiplying this by negative 6. Someone help me out. Negative 6. Yeah. Negative 6x. Yep. Minus, minus, minus six. Minus six. And so, um, you know, miss, at this point, Mr. Wu is relieved because he gave you the right factor at the beginning. Because what's going to happen here? Cancel. They're all going to cancel. What's this number down here, this zero? When you get to the end of your, you know, your remainder. division, that's that remainder that you get at the end. So you would write like remainder whatever, right? Like remainder three, or remainder four. But yeah, if you get a remainder of zero, right, that means that there's nothing left over. So you've divided it in nice and neatly. So a remainder of zero. I don't have to worry about that, which is great, okay? Um, one last thing, right? We talked about divisor, quotient, remainder. This thing you were actually dividing, the thing you started with, does anyone know its name? It also starts with a D. It's very close to this thing. Um, this original function you began with, it's a thing that you've... Yeah, now this is an economics word, right? Well, actually, it's our word and economics borrowed it because when you've got a thing and you're dividing it out into lots of people, that's a... That's what we mean by a dividend, right? So this is the thing that you're, is being divided. Just like in the stock market, you've got some profits. It's like, let's hand out those dividends, okay? So that's the thing that's being divided. All right.